destination weddings, extravagant venues, exotic foods and trousseaus for brides and grooms to be are a buzzword today. But to take care of all of that for your big day can be a bit overwhelming. Being a wedding planner is all about creativity and managerial skills. Although wedding planning may not essentially require a formal education, professional courses in event management or wedding planning can help you gain the right set of skills and also boost your career. From planning a bachelor's bash in the hot and happening city of Vegas to arranging an extravagant beachside wedding, wedding planners play a dual role of a coordinator and an event planner. Help couples manifest their wedding dreams into reality. A flourishing industry with a current net worth of more than 100,000 crores, the wedding industry and its associated industries according to experts will witness more growth in the future. Over the last 8-10 years, uh, the business has been growing at about 25-30%. I guess the best times are still to come because uh, over the last 2-3 years is the time frame within which the market and the business has started to get a little more organized. A wedding planner's job card includes various activities from understanding the style and taste of the couple to planning events for the wedding and charting out the wedding budget. A wedding planner plays the role of a manager and a coordinator bringing together several wedding professionals like caterers, florists and makeup artists, thus demanding long hours of work and an equally high level of stress. Uh, wedding planners are essentially you know, one-man shops. Uh, they kind of work closely with the family, suggest them who to use, who not to use, what to do and uh, operate generally like that. Wedding management companies, on the contrary, are enterprises that are more driven to render comprehensive and complete solutions. And they get involved right at the inception stages of the card, selection of venues, etc. And their job responsibility finishes when the last guest has departed. Wedding planning does not necessarily require formal education. However, experts suggest a certificate course in wedding planning or event management can be helpful in gaining the necessary skills and industry exposure. I would suggest for anybody getting into wedding planning to do a basic degree first. So you have a graduation and on that you can then get into a postgraduate degree in say event management and then specialize in wedding planning more as an an expertise that you develop as part of the experience, work experience you get when you do wedding plan, uh, when you do event management. There are people who get into um, wedding planning after doing a course in, say, hospitality, or a course in mass communication. These could be other avenues by which you can then get into uh, wedding planning. The curriculum usually covers areas of study in planning and marketing events, designing wedding budgets, and studying wedding trends, among others. Careers in wedding planning can be diverse and demanding. They are also considered to be among some of the most well-paid jobs. It's become huge even in terms of the kind of uh, uh, expenses that people normally spend on a wedding. So a large part of it is that. And there are even specializations within wedding planning. Uh, they have the experts who come in to do just the decorations, there are experts for catering, there are experts for wedding cards or wedding gifts. So each of these are also expertise that is brought in to make and enhance wedding planning. While many wedding planners or wedding consultants are usually self-employed, some also prefer to work for big wedding consultation companies and hotels. With Richa Sujatya, Sharon Alex for NDTV. Wedding planning is all about bringing together professionals like makeup artists, bridal wear designers, caterers, florists and so on. But you've really wondered who are the masterminds behind the themes, color schemes and flavors of a wedding, then we bring to you vis a -vis with just the right people. We have with us today Anushree and Prerna from Theme Weavers International and they are going to talk to us all about wedding design. Anushri, why don't you take us a bit back in time and tell us how did you come up with Theme uh, Weavers? When we started off, uh, we figured that there was there, there were many people who wanted celebrations which were themed where someone walked into a space and did not really have to guess what they're about to experience or what they're experiencing um, so we walked into many such occasions where we had to uh, really brainstorm and figure out as to what really the theme was yeah. because themes those days were considered as colors uh, a few balloons 
sometimes just a few flowers depending on what the occasion is of course but it, at the end of the day it was disappointing so when we thought of theme weavers uh, we thought of a place where people can come in and think of a concept and uh, think of their dreams and it will be executed so it was animals and i was at havelock and uh, i just thought when i was at that place that this is all our theme is so themes are from dreams and are from real life pera why don't you also tell us what uh, do you guys exactly do i mean what is a wedding designer's job like sure so uh, a wedding designer's job basically is when uh, you meet the couple you meet the parents you talk to them you talk to them and you understand what has been their dream all around since the daughter or the son was born so we speak with them we understand what is that they are expecting uh, and then we design an experience which matches their requirements so some people really want a very very huge wedding set so we will uh, try and understand that and design it accordingly some people say it should be very subtle very very subtle but yet very professionally done Right. So we kind of try and match that. You guys call yourself wedding designers. Now, how are wedding designers different from wedding planners? Up till say four or five years ago, there was no differentiation, and even as of today, mm -hmm. lines seem to blur at many occasions. Mm -hmm. But we took this plunge of trying to create mm -hmm. a distinction, say three years back, uh, when we said that it's not just going to be a planning service. okay planning services is also very important because then you're orchestrating to bring all the elements like you rightly said a makeup artist a caterer a florist and all of those people together yeah okay <clears throat> but what do they come together to what is the experience so here at theme weavers we create an experience we design an experience so you're you you're actually laying the foundation stone and from there is what stems i mean the entire house right, is built right so a designer primarily puts together a thought uh, onto paper and then follows it up all the way through to reality right whereas planning is of course the second step post you've designed and you know what you want from that experience you know now that anushree has talked about execution i'm really wondering like how do you guys come up with designs what are the key points that you have to essentially keep in mind when you are designing a plan for someone's wedding sure so uh, when we design there are a few things we take in uh, consideration as we specialize in destination weddings uh, we take in consideration the destination being spoken about what are the key features for that right. destination which are there how do we highlight and marry the expectations of the family with the destination that we are uh, looking at mm. and also uh, uh, so uh, at uh, in a destination what happens a lot of people come from all around the country or maybe outside the country so also to give them a flavor of that destination while keeping in line the expectations from the family is uh, how we bring about a design Right. and uh, once uh, also uh, we see the venue so why we say that we like to design and uh, we like to design each wedding separately is because they can't be a customized solution mm -hmm. you know we feel there is can't be that you can have the same solution for uh, two weddings what do you think about being you know the career scope of being in this field what is it like for somebody who is uh, actively looking forward to become a wedding planner uh, i would say just one thing which should summarize uh if you can stay hungry and foolish yeah. then this is for you right because you'll actually quite uh, literally also be staying hungry <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> prena would you like to add us something like yes. what do you think is the career scope like here so uh what i tell uh, my team is uh, event management is a life skill right it teaches you life skill than anything so uh, you actually end up managing everything which is around in your personal life as well until you don't learn to manage that you will be very it will be very difficult for you to manage your professional uh, stuff as well so uh, we we believe that each weaver is a powerhouse do you have any message for aspiring wedding planners would you like some you know out of your experience would you like to share something with them that might help them what we like to say is uh come come on board experience it and you will never have to look back 
because you will not only gain professionally, you will also gain personally. Right, Arushree, this field is so dynamic. So if if you you have to stay uh, on top of your game, and that can only be done if you're very very uh, knowledge hungry. All right, so Anushree has made quite a point there that wedding planning is not really, in fact, wedding designing is not really the field for lazy, and you need to do a lot of hard work. Well, thank you so much both of you for being on the chat with us today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anurag Khurana. I do wedding wear for men. I design wedding wear for men and I do bridal trousseaus for the ladies. My education background is that I'm, I started, I'm brought up in Delhi. I, st I studied in modern Bhavakamba. I was a pure science student. Um, my mother's a doctor, my grandfather's a doctor. Thought I'd become one but didn't pan out that way. Uh, from from pure sciences, I went into arts. Uh, I did English honors, did very well, but didn't see me doing that either too well. Started doing my own thing, uh, did some exports, first in, a first in a partnership, then my own thing. While I was doing my own thing, I did a fashion designing course. I just wanted to get into doing uh, designing for the domestic market and literally overnight I shut down the exports and uh, opened uh, my design unit under the name of Urban Studio. Um, I did not put it under my name because I wanted it to be accessible and comfortable for people to walk in without being hindered with a name and the scare of walking into a designer's uh, outlet. For what I do, I work more on textures, on fabrics, on fall. So it's really, really important to actually know how a fabric is going to fall vis-a-vis -vis whether it be an achkan, whether it be a, a man's suit, a, a waistcoat, a Nehru jacket, the way the trousers are going to fall. Is, it, is, the, is the garment holding enough? Is it enough to take that look? So those are important colors. Color palettes are very, very important. Well, I think they're very important uh, uh, because I feel that all colors don't scoot, suit all skin tones. And, that's important that you do need to know what is actually going to suit the other person. The kind of challenges we face, uh, I've already spoken about it. I've, I've told you about uh, how clients are a huge challenge. And I, I think it's a great, that's actually a good part of the challenge is the fact that you meet different people and you have to go with what they are doing and what they want and trying to, trying to find a mid path and a midway where, where the garment at the end of it the client should walk out looking fabulous and that's, that's the challenge. Uh, the second challenge again I spoke about is dealing, because I did mention it's labor intensive, it is a labor oriented uh, industry. You are working with uh, people who sometimes are tough to deal with. Design is always wanted. This is something which is, uh, this is an industry which is growing. Um, there are people, more people, more people than not, are now today not looking at picking up ready-mades for their, uh, for their weddings especially. Uh, they want to get something done from a designer. They want to go to somebody good, some, and they want to get something special for, the, uh, for, that, for that one special day. I mean, it is that one special day. And um, people do spend that money and people are looking for, uh, for options like this. Uh, so, yeah, the industry perspective in that in that respect, there is a lot of scope for designers. Well, it's time for us to slip into a short break. On the other side, we are exploring more careers in the world of wedding planning. Entrepreneurship has touched almost every sector and industry in India, including the wedding planning industry. Now we bring to you an interesting story of a Gurgaon-based startup that's bringing together thousands of wedding professionals and millions of young Indian couples on a common platform and helping them with wedding solutions. Take a look. They met as interns in a health nutrition company in 2010. And as luck would have it, they fell in love and tied the knot four years later. Thus began the story of Wed Me Good. Anand and me met while we were interning in GlaxoSmithKline. Um, he's an MBA from XLRI, I'm a Master's in Economics from Delhi School. 
and coincidentally uh, we were both interning in the marketing department and coincidentally we were the only two interns who were allotted the same seat in the same laptop so we had to kind of share laptops and we just started seeing each other and four years later we kind of got married so when I was planning my wedding and I was looking for a makeup artist in Hyderabad I had like the worst time and the worst experience because there was no portal where I could just you know find reviews of what people are saying over there how much do they charge uh, who's professional what do their photos look like so I had to literally make blind decisions and while we were planning and we were you know we went through all these decisions we realized that there's really nothing online to help people out there and that's where I think the seeds of wedding good were first born. Meet Anand and Mehek Shahani, founders of Wed Me Good, a wedding portal that makes wedding planning easy for millions of Indians by bringing together wedding professionals like wedding photographers, vendors and designers among others on a common platform. So when Mehek came to me with the idea of a wedding blog, uh, we did a little bit of research and I realized, you know, why not just, why just a blog, why not make it a full-fledged portal? Uh, we don't come from a wedding background, neither from a tech background, but we realize the need for a product like this. As of now, vendors register themselves, okay, create a profile on WedMeGood, and we are very much a marketing platform for them to showcase their work. Users who like their profile tend to contact them directly. The road to entrepreneurship is never an easy one, and like any other startup, WedMeGood also had its share of business problems. Getting genuine vendors on board and maintaining price transparency were some of the key challenges. Weddings in general are probably the last when it comes to like techno uh, technology adoption, right? It's still an old school sector. So even if you're talking to a decorators or photographers, like when we launched two years back, um, a lot of them didn't even have Facebook pages, for example. So convincing them to be on a portal is a huge task. Maybe with people like makeup artists and photographers, it's easy. But with some of the more old school uh, players such as venues and decorators, it was very hard for us. The second thing is there is no transparency in pricing in this industry, right? And as a portal, we were very clear from the get-go that we need to make sure that customers know how much each person charges. So even convincing them to put up their prices online um, so that everybody could view it was like a huge culture shock for people. In its second year of operation, Wed Me Good is now also available as a mobile app. With a current association of more than 3,500 vendors and 1 million users, Wed Me Good looks forward to expanding its operations in India and abroad. With Richa Sajatia, Sharon Alex for NDTV. We have with us Ishan Suri from Art Photo Studios. They are a creative production house and specialize in wedding photography and videography. Ishan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Ishan, please tell us a bit about how you started off with Art Photo Studios. You know, was uh, getting into photography and videography always your first choice or how did it happen? I think as the industry has evolved and as the market has evolved and most importantly as the customer and the couples are becoming more educated about what they want, uh, we have specifically converted, up, up converted or upstreamed into production because the difference what we say between production as well as uh, and uh, well production and photography and videography is that photography and videography is still an execution or a last mile uh, task. Okay, um, and by that I mean that if you know in a, especially in a wedding, yeah. if you say my wedding is on the first, second, third of December, a photographer or a videographer would just show up or would plan a bit and show up and shoot. But a production company like us, we actually only do one, maybe two weddings a month, even in peak season. Uh, looking back a bit in time, you know, let's say five years down the line, the way we used to look at wedding photography and the entire, you know, the profession around this, uh, how has, how much of that has changed today? And also, how lucrative do you think these careers are today compared to back in time? So there are people who have done, you know, mainstream academic degrees and are working. We have lawyers working with us. We have people who were journalists working with us. We have people who were, uh, you know, they were other professionals or they've been into other businesses or been into other kind of careers who are converting to this. Because today, if you have the, uh, the interest or you have the creative talent in you, today there is an outlet and there is a place where you could, can go and make a life around it and you can actually earn a good living. So a lot of young people are converting to it. There's a lot of demand in the industry. All right, Ashan, a quick wrap on the chat now. If you were to give a few career tips to people who want to start off as wedding photographers, what would you want to say? Practice as much as you can on 
uh, your friends' weddings before you actually start taking on commercial contracts. Start small. Uh, don't waste money on technology and equipment. The more equipment you have in your bag, the more confused your creative work would be. The last and final rule, make your wedding contract with your couples and your freelancers very clear on what you expect to give them, what you will do, what you will not do. So that was a lot of valuable information from Ashan today. Ashan, thank you so much for being on the show. All right, it's time for us to say goodbye. Catch up with us next week on a brand new show. And in the meantime, do write in to us your feedback on mindspace at the rate netv.com and follow us on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Catch the heads up episodes you might have missed during the week at these times only on NDTV Prime.